I, I do have a student that wanted to ask you a question. Would you be willing to, uh, some of them had to go because the class has changed, but uh, the, her name is uh, Ken, Kenzie, but she'll introduce herself. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. Hi, Yossi, I'm Kenzie. It's an honor to speak with you, first of all. Thank you. And I'd like to let you know how inspiring I find you, not only in your survival story, but your outlook on and your actions towards preserving the planet. I couldn't agree more with your views, uh, especially nowadays where a lot of people don't see the value anymore. So it's definitely important to have your story coming out again. Um, but I was wondering if your ordeal in Bolivia prevented you from any further wilderness expeditions. Did it deter you from going back out into the wild or? No, not at all. On the contrary. Actually, I, 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 met, I never stopped, uh, you know, m my spirit of adventure is the romance of adventure. Mm -hmm. What I want to say, I'm not an extreme achiever or adrenaline seeker. So I don't climb mountains or cross desert to be the first one that does that. My adventures have, are, you know, like there, there's romance in them. It's about remote places, remote people. It's about storytelling around the fire. It's things like that. And I've perfected that uh, um, type of adventure. Uh, my system basically is to choose a place on the planet, open the Lonely Planet book, read it carefully, <laughs> then look at the atlas. Yeah. And so I go to places where I don't have any information. Um, and you know search the internet and you know i found a few places where, and, and i went there just to see what's going what, what's there and in general i travel alone i travel all over the world I, I prefer to travel alone because i don't like to be alone and if you travel alone you're not alone if you travel with somebody you're alone because then you create a group you're isolating yourself you're looking with judgment at others you practice your own language and your own habits. But if you're alone, you immediately have no choice but to learn the language. People invite you to, you know, they see you more vulnerable. And so I like, I think that the sense of adventure is traveling alone to really remote places. I always did it. I never, you know, despite that event, even the Amazon jungle wasn't, was never for me a threat. I never saw this malice there. I knew I was stupid to put myself in such circumstances, but I never thought that the forest is uh, um, the, the culprit here. So, um, and I, I never suffered any trauma, not even one nightmare ever yeah. uh, about this experience. So if I had a trauma from this experience, it was more existential, but it wasn't emotional or mental. You know, there's no fear of me, of nature, and adventure is a way of life. Yeah, it's definitely my my, you know, I, that's that's my archetype. I'm I'm true to that. You know, I follow my heart. I follow my dreams. So if you could go back, you wouldn't change the ordeal. It's just something that you experienced, and you're happy to have it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's not a fair question because that's absolutely a theory. I cannot go back, and um, so you know, I I cannot really answer it. It just uh, you know, of course, if you think about it, 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 it's stupid not to learn from experience. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, I, I, but it's very hard to answer. Those circumstances were so particular. I don't even think, you know, I think it was really destiny. That, you know. Well, I think if anyone were to experience it, you were the right man. Thank you. I really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Back to Great. You. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, it was a pleasure. Back to John. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again, Yossi. I, I did have one other question a student asked me to ask you. I, I already know the answer, but I, because of, of the book and the movie, the trailer, uh, and that was, what was it that kept you going when you were at your lowest point? What was it that kept you going? Yeah, yeah. well... First of all, there weren't many lowest points. So this is another observation of importance because in, in a real survival situation, you cannot afford being in low points because it diminishes your chances to survive. So it's natural just to be upbeat, optimistic, and 
full of hope and, 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 and you know, like certainty is that you will make it. You know, it's part of the mechanism. So there weren't many low points, not emotionally and also not physically. For some reason, I didn't get sick, even though I was wet day and night. I could get a pneumonia or anything. Or even like there's a lot of life preservation that is just done by the circumstances themselves. But my lowest points were, you know, when an airplane passed, that surge of hope was the hardest thing for me to experience. You know, like this is when I let, you know, something in, in, in me just snapped and I, I just lost the motivation, you know, I was, and, 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 you know, at that moment, there was some miracle, you know, and, and the miracle was an hallucination, I think, but I'm, I'm saying I think because it was an hallucination that revealed it to me as opposed to an hallucination that I was contrived contriving and, and making it wasn't contrived and it was an organic natural and i don't know how to explain it but from that i learned maybe the biggest enlightenment because that hallucination was of a young woman that appeared next to me and, and, and the, the interesting part about it was that she needed help so what saved me is not somebody that helped me but somebody that needed my help. They needed your help. Yeah. So that was a huge thing to, to see that when you cannot help yourself anymore, that you will still help somebody else. That's incredible. When, you know, like self-serving goes that far. But the moment you start self-serving others, it's a totally new stage. And, and, and you know, it was quite amazing. It must have made you really question that strange place between your mind and everything else no, for sure for sure <laughs> you know, this, uh, and I, think, I, I really think that this you know is, uh, as I said to Kenzie before that you know like my only trauma was existential because I did touch something and I couldn't deny it. and it confused me and mm -hmm. also made me long for it once you touch it you want to touch it again Mm -hmm. And it's dangerous, you know, because it's fire. And mm -hmm. in certain circumstances, I just, you know, I, I, it had to be there because it's, it was urgent. And I, I, I would say that, you know, like I, I really felt Providence really felt it strong and knew it was there. Mm -hmm. and, but once you go back to normal, life becomes a bit empty without it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's, I would say, was my biggest, uh, my biggest trauma. Biggest challenge, I guess, after too. I, I, I know you, you probably have to go. I just have one last question, if that's okay. Um, I think you do a lot of public speaking, and you know, you've, you've managed to share this story. And I think sharing the story is so, so important. Um, what would you impart to people, especially, let's say, at a high school age? Um, you know, we're talking especially between the ages of 12 and 17 or 18, uh, in terms of entering the world, what would you, what would you say to them? I, I, don't would know say to them I would say to them that, you know, if, if they look at me and they see some kind of a, a role model in a way, or because I wrote a book and the book is a movie and a, a successful book, I want to remind them that this is the my story and, 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 and my life and my book. And it's great that with my life and my story and my book, I can provide some inspiration. However, the inspiration is for them to write their book, their story, and assume responsibility to being the hero. Because that's the, the big thing, is that we have to remember that we have a unique value, each one of us, and it's our duty um, to live our life, to live our dreams, and to write a very good book, you know, because if you write with your life, you do write a book, you know, each one of us is writing an autobiography. Mm -hmm. And it's usually melodramatic with lots of, you know, very eventful, and it's a thick volume that we write with our life. But if we remember that, we also take responsibility for our part in creating the story, our value, in being the main character, because if you write your own story, you better be the protagonist. Right. But not all of us, you know, sometimes we feel inadequate, insecure, 
And I understand that, especially at young age, until we form. But I, I would think that that is the inspiration. Remember that life is an adventure. You, you, you write your autobiography. Make sure that you're proud of it. Make sure that you write yourself uh, um, as a hero. <laughs> and the journey, you know, the hero has to pay a price for being a hero. Yeah. It tends to fall and get up. It, it, it follows dreams and it, you know, it, the heart is breaking in the process, you know. I, I, I've been a tech entrepreneur and I learned one thing from that. Uh, tech entrepreneurship is based on iteration, you know. All the technology world is based on iteration. So there's never a failure. It's just another iteration. So you never fail as long as you keep on going. No matter, and it doesn't matter how many times you fall and get up. As long as you keep on moving, those are only iterations. So it's never a failure. You either succeed or learn, you know? And, and then you iterate. So this is the secret of life, I think. Just keep going. Uh, I cannot, you know, each one, it takes time to find the core, to connect, to hear the calling. Um, but you know like know that it's about you that's that's what i'm trying to say <laughs>